We'll start with Mike, about four rows back in the middle. Carlos, obviously you have a big series to manage. Does any part of you get caught up in the history coming out here to Dodger Stadium and kind of uh, playing in an iconic venue like this? Yeah, I mean, you got to take a step back and realize that, you know, what a privilege it is to uh, be able to come to Dodger Stadium and play in an LCS. You know, there's obviously history, but... You know, the fact that you come to the ballpark uh, with an opportunity to do something special and it's against a really good team uh, means a lot, you know. Um, so definitely humbling. Uh, but, yeah, you do take the time to step back and realize that what a privilege this is. A few more for Carlos. Clinton on the uh, far right. Hey, Carlos, uh, you're in your first year. Doc on the other side, your managerial counterpart is obviously a veteran. You know, do you guys have any sort of relationship? Do you know him? And what's it like with going up against somebody like that who's got so much? Uh, not really. Um, I met him, uh, you know, when I was a bench coach. Uh, but then uh, briefly conversations like before a game or, or, you know, things like that. But a lot of got of respect for him. Uh, he's done a tremendous job, not only this year after facing – so much adversity with the injuries and all that, but you look at, I don't know, 11 years or so, um, a special human um, and a really good manager. So it is, again, it's a, it's a privilege to have the opportunity to go out there and compete against them. Go to Tim in the second row. With Senga short today, how do you decide whether to go with Peterson like last time for a chunk of the game versus the, any of the other avenues? Yeah, I think the game will tell us uh, what to do. We're going to go out there wait, see what happens, let the game unfold and play out, and then we'll be ready to make adjustments and make the decision uh, who's coming in after that. Uh, the good thing is everyone, er everyone is rested, everyone is ready to go. So, like I said, game will tell us, and we'll, we'll, we'll make the call. Uh, we got Sierra on the right side. Hi, Carlos. With a guy like Jeff McNeil, what does he add in the possibility that he's back and playing? Um, a lot. Um, you know, he's a left-handed hitter. Uh, that His bat-to-ball skills are off the chart. Provides versatility defensively. This is a guy that can not only play in the infield at second base, but can play in the outfield, uh, corner outfield, right field, left field if needed. Um, and he's been a huge part of this team uh, the whole year. Uh, obviously, him being down for the past six weeks or so, we missed him. Uh, but he worked really hard to put himself in a position to where he's now a player for us, and uh, he's a huge plus for us, you know, because, like I said, the bat and the versatility uh, makes us a better team. I was also talking to Harrison Bader, and we both agreed that this team just has that it factor. How do you describe that it factor? It's hard to describe, to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, it's a special group. Um, we've been through a lot, you know, since – the very first week of the season, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of adversity, and we never gave up. Uh, we kept trusting, you know, uh, in each other, and um, here we are, you know. Uh, for the past two months, I feel like we've been playing playoff baseball. Um, but it's, it's, it's a special group. Not only they're talented, they're really good players, but they're special people. And when you have that type of combination, that could be scary. So uh, here we are playing a really good team. You could probably say the same about the Dodgers, you know. <laughs> They've been through a lot, and um, they just got done playing a really tough series. So it'll be a fun series, um, and we just, ha we just have to go out there and enjoy it. Thank you. A couple more in English for Carlos. We got Shy in the back on the left side. Carlos, if you go back to June uh, at the point when you guys were 11 under 500, how would you describe some of the conversations you had at that point to steer everything back in the right direction? And it could often take teams a lot of effort to just get back level, and then sometimes they fall back. What are some of the conversations you guys had uh, to ensure that didn't occur for you? Yeah, there was a lot of conversation. And um, I think the biggest thing was having that mentality of one day at a time and winning each game, uh, each day. Not necessarily the game, but our process, our preparation. 
so you got to give credit not only to the players who were the ones that went out there and did it, but the coaches, the support staff, the trainers, um, the front office. So there's a lot of people here uh, that had a hand on it. And um, just a lot of conversations. So I'm going to go back to how can we get better today? You know, are you doing everything that you need to do to get ready to play and win a baseball game? Um, are we doing the things that we need to do in player development, in scouting, in, you know, in the training room, in the weight room, in, with the information? So we knew there was a lot of season left. Uh, we knew we had good players, but we needed to be better. And um, you got to give all, those, all of those guys credit because they went out there and did it. Not only we had those conversations, but you needed to follow up and, with actions. And, and we did that, and here we are. Do one more in English. Uh, we'll go to Hazel, and then we'll finish with Barry in English. Carlos, the Dodgers had a quick turnaround to this NLCS. What did the extra days afford your team or allow you guys to do? I imagine you did have some advanced scouting on the Padres Dodgers series, but what did the two days give you guys? Yeah, um, a lot of guys needed it, especially the past two weeks where it felt like we never home. Um, but um, time for guys to take a step back and reset and get treatment, uh, you know, rest the bullpen. Uh, we were able to, you know, <clears throat> adjust our rotation accordingly. Um, and, yeah, um, a lot of meetings uh, in preparation for potential two teams. Um, we needed those two days, and uh, now here we are getting ready for a, what is going to be a fun Series against the Dodgers, and uh, we're ready to go. Barry. Hey, Carlos. What, your experience with the Yankees, how did that prepare you for the season here and just getting into the postseason? Yeah, um, you know, it helped me a lot every step along the way, and not only at the big league level, but, uh, you know, in the minors, you know. Uh, I wore a lot of different hats, whether it was an extra coach, a manager, defensive coach, coordinator, field coordinator. Like, uh, you know, uh, I went through a lot of positions there that I feel like helped me get to this position. Obviously, getting to the big leagues as a coach and then as a bench coach um, and doing it in a big market like New York, you know, where there's going to be a lot of noise. There's going to be a lot of ex expectations. Uh, and you have to be able to navigate tough times. You have to be consistent. And uh, I feel like, you know, with a lot of years that I spent with that organization, help me prepare to get to where I'm at right now. So I'm grateful for that. Uh, how do you find the difference between what the expectations are like being a Yankee as opposed to being a Met? Um, they're high expectations, you know, whether you're with the Yankees or with the Mets. Uh, and, you know, any big market team, I'm pretty sure here with the Dodgers and, and cities like that where their fan base are intense and they're passionate. Uh, but I love it, man, uh, especially with our fan base. They've been through a lot, um, and not only this year, but it's been fun, uh, you know, watching them going to City Field and live and die with every pitch, just like we are. And um, it's a privilege, it's an honor for me to put in this uniform, and uh, couldn't be happier.